This video is sponsored by BetterHelp. Ciao, sei la mamma? Sì. So you're preparing Amatriciana? Sì. How many Amatriciana have you cooked in your life? Eh, <laughs> tante, tantissime. 100, 200, 300 persone. Okay. Quindi tanti negli anni. Okay. Tante, tante, tante. What's up guys? Salut! This is Alex. Today I want to cook one of the most iconic pasta dishes there is in all Roman cuisine, okay? A dish that is very popular all over Italy and even beyond that. A pasta dish that is in my eyes as good as or maybe even better than the almighty pasta carbonara. Also a pasta dish that any self-respecting cook must know, must have in his or her repertoire. Pasta alla matriciana. Alla matriciana. A matriciana is a deceptively simple pasta dish. From so few ingredients comes such an amazing flavor. It is made with just pasta, tomatoes, pecorino cheese and guanciale. Now, guanciale is a cured and aged pork chick that is super fatty and delicious, but it's not well known outside of Italy. So in the previous episode, I went all the way to a small mountain town in Italy called Amatrice. There, I visited a family of artisanal guanciale makers, the Berardis, and they showed me how this precious ingredient is still made by hand today. Oh, these are the guanciale. Now what you did not see in that episode is that afterwards we went straight to their family restaurant where I had an eye-opening pasta experience. Okay, ciao. Piacere. This is Emma Berardi. Emma is a real Italian mom. Fantastico. Now, besides being a very talented cook, Emma is also the chef of her own restaurant. Now, I had the privilege of not only witnessing how she makes amatriciana, but I also had the chance to sit at the table and to eat that amatriciana. Vai con l'amatriciana. Wow, that is stunning. So the recipe is printed in my eyes, in my memory, but also it's engraved in my taste buds. Wow. It's the first time you, you eat amatriciana. No, it's not the first time that I'm having amatriciana, but it's the first time that I'm having amatriciana in amatrice. Amatrice. Mm -hmm. Doesn't ring a bell? Amatrice is the birthplace of Amatriciana pasta. Amatrice, Amatriciana. Now, of course, the internet is already covered with Amatriciana recipes. The problem is that very, very few of these recipes are really, really authentic. Too many shortcuts, too many liberties have been taken. They miss a mandatory step, they skip a technique, they swap an ingredient for another one. You can't do that. So today, we fix that. Guanciale amatriciano tradizionale. This is like the OG stuff. So in her kitchen, Emma Berardi never uses bacon. She never uses pancetta. You couldn't call it amatriciana if you were to do so. The recipe would be good, maybe, but it wouldn't have that specific taste. Guanciale. On the outside, you've got a pepperoncino, so the chili pepper that just brings some heat. On the inside, it's so delicate. It's almost sweet as a smell. So I'm cutting fairly thick slices because this is a premium product and I don't want to make tiny little lardon out of something that is this magnificent. Two slices is plenty on this. So guanciale has two sides. One that is softer and one that is more tough. This one, you will not be able to render it during cooking. So you have to get rid of that rind. Step number one, we need to cook these. So, I'm sure you know this, but I didn't add any oil to the pan. It doesn't need oil. Emma Berari doesn't even use a teaspoon of olive oil. Okay. She makes good use of the rendered fat from the cured pork chick. E a dopo che facci con il grasso? 
condimento. You see all the fat in there? Why would I ever add olive oil in there? I mean, that fat is going to be way more flavorful than olive oil in this case. So I've cut the meat in thick pieces for two reasons. Number one, I want to emphasize the beauty of that product. So I want people to feel the texture, to have some crunch on the outside, but some tenderness on the inside and juiciness. Also, bacon or any pork belly vibe shrinks a lot when you cook it. I know I call it bacon. I did. I can already tell that the smell is different now. It's getting more caramelized. Let me do a little tasting session. Okay, and now a quick word from our sponsor, BetterHelp, H-E-L-P. Before you can fix a problem in your life, you need first to become aware of its existence. Sounds stupid, but basically if there's a rock blocking your road, you first need to see that rock, to understand it, to see where it's played, how big is it? I don't know what kind of material this is made of. This is probably the engineer speaking. But you need to see things, you need to accept them, you need to understand them, and then only, only then you can start fixing them. I believe in therapy, very much. And that is why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, Better Help. Better Help's mission is to make therapy more affordable and more accessible. And this is an important mission because finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're limited to the options in your area. Better Help is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, Better Help can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. If you don't really fit with that therapist, which is a common thing with therapy, you can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network or anything like that. So there's a link in my description below. It is betterhelp.com slash Alex. Clicking that link helps support this channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. Thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. Mmm, juicy. If the fat has melted, it's not like bouncing back. For me, it's ready. Obviously, you don't want to wash that pan. What you've got at the bottom, the fond, is very precious. And this is going to be the base of our amatriciana sauce afterwards. I've divided my guanciale between the fat and the meat over here. This way, I can adjust exactly the amount I need from each one. The tomato sauce. So in her restaurant, I noticed that Emma was using a very fine pulp of tomato. These, I believe, are whole tomatoes. So I'm just gonna blitz them super quick. I forgot. Emma, in her recipe, a splash of wine is added. So I'm gonna start the sauce now by deglazing the pan with a bit of wine. This way I will still have the flavor, but I won't overcook the guanciale. Right, so I'm gonna let this cook very gently. I'm gonna let this blip away on the side and we're gonna cook the pasta. That's something very cool about this type of pasta dish. The sauce cooks for the same amount of time as the pasta cooks. Quanti minuti for la, la matriciana? Non okay. ha molta cottura la matriciana. 10 minuti, no. sì, un quarto d'ora. We need to talk about pasta. So I thought amatriciana was supposed to be made with bucatini. You know that very long uh, spaghetti with a hole in the center. I am pretty relieved that Emma wasn't using bucatini. 
Why? Uh, I'm not a big fan of this pasta. I think it's too big. I think the hole in the center is absolutely useless. First of all, the sauce never gets in. Show me a bucatini, cut it in half, there's no sauce in the center, 100%. Second, there's a big, big flaw with bucatini that was pointed out by uh, Dan Pashman. I was listening to his podcast and he said, Have you ever tried to use a drinking straw? You can't. Have you ever tried to suck the drinking straw into your mouth? It is physically impossible. <laughs> you slurp nothing, okay? You're slurping the air. That's what you're slurping. So following what the mother of all Amatricianas did in Italy, I'm going to be using thick spaghetti, spaghettoni. I just want to make a quick comment about that sauce. I've been cooking it for five minutes and it's starting to get there, but there still is a bit of that tang somewhere. Now, in her kitchen, Emma is frying the passata or the tomato sauce for 10 to 15 minutes just to get rid of the acidic edge, but also to intensify the flavors of it. But you don't want to render it down to a dark pulp. It should still be lively. We're not there yet. The pasta is not cooked. It's getting stuck in my teeth. It's below al dente, but that's exactly what I need right now. Emma knows how to cook pasta right for Amatriciana. She undercooks them intentionally, and then she finishes the cooking inside the sauce. It goes from slightly undercooked in the sauce, and then it's al dente. So one little piece of advice, it's better to have a sauce that is too thick. Because if you drop your pasta into a watery sauce, you're f***ed up. Reason is, you will want to reduce the sauce, and so you will have to cook the whole thing further, and the pasta is going to be overcooked. If you start with a sauce that is a little too thick, a little too dry, you can always add a bit of water, and that's the end of it. Now, at this stage, you want to fold in some pecorino cheese. Emma, she uses a fair amount of it, but she folds it in multiple times. One handful, mixy, mixy, mixy. Another handful once the first one has been incorporated. Cheese is gonna thicken the sauce, it's gonna enrich the dish, but it's also gonna add layers of flavor because pecorino cheese is pretty funky and wild. Se vedi adesso sono pochi passaggi. Okay. Per importante, mantecare. 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 <laughs> wow, the sauce is very unctuous. Oh, look at the size of this pasta. Now I need to take some of that guanciale. Oh la la, putain, c'est là. Hmm. Super bon. C'est méga ultra bon. I love how thick these spaghetti are and how well they pair with the guanciale strips that I did. They respond to one another. This is the perfect combination. The sauce has lost the too bright acidity. Now it's just mellow and smooth and a little sticky, just a touch. Massive umami from the tomatoes and the pecorino. Salty, sweet, with texture, bite, bounce. The pasta is glistening with sauce. Beautiful, red, colorful. 
un buon chalet, tomato, pecorino e basta, basta. The million dollar question, how close is this dish to what I ate in Amatrice? This is homey, this is loving, this is satisfying. If you ask me, it's one hell of a dish. What I'm missing right now is the Berardi family around the table with me enjoying that dish. Emma, Ernesto and Rem. <laughs> Guess I have to go back, it's a good excuse. I really hope you're gonna give this authentic recipe a try. Try to go and get the right ingredients, try not to skip any step and... I promise you'll experience something truly unique. You will feel and taste what I felt and tasted in Italy. Wow, that's a mega monster. Go give it a try, I believe it's worth the effort. I'm gonna call it a day and we'll see us in the next one, okay? Bye, salut.